through thick and thin. Despite Lucas' bitterness, Gran was right. He needed to hash things out with Rolo. A big fight changes the nature of a friendship. Whether, in the end, it is for the better or for the worse, all comes down to understanding. If one is not careful, the same familiarity that builds the strongest of bonds can become the wrecking ball that shatters them. Luca emerged from seclusion, taking in the crisp festival air. But the events of the day weren't on his mind. He had to find Rolo. Roxy rolled her eyes, shaking her head. Luca looked down and kicked at the dirt. Sticker pointed to his grinning mouth. distance with a wistful look. <laughs> Jeff turned to Luca with a furrowed brow, then gave an understanding nod. For a moment, the two now shared that same wistful gaze.
Griffin looked away suspiciously. with excitement. <laughs> Kato straightened up and cleared his throat as if preparing to sing. Kato stared at Luca eagerly. grabbed the modern science of atomic radiation from the shelf. of success from the shelf. Luca grabbed the issue with self-help, a helpful guide from the shelf. Photography, Volume 5, from the shelf. Luca grabbed The Adventures of Hank Atomic, Issue Number 4, from the shelf. Luca grabbed The Adventures of Hank Atomic, Issue Number 5, from the shelf. Kato removed his book from the desk and replaced it with Luca's, turning on the lamp. He slid the book under the purple light. Two words glowed. The Adventures of Hank Atomic, Issue 5. Luca clicked his tongue with recognition. Kato 
Charlie began flipping through the pages, stopping when he hit a glowing word. He continued flipping. Reaching the end of the book, Kato looked up. Before Luca could finish his sentence, Griffin handed him a corn dog. Luca shrugged, taking a sizable bite out of the corn dog. Luca tongued at his cheeks, feeling something rough between his teeth. He reached into his mouth and pulled out a slip of paper. He shook off the bits of corn dog to read the slip. Luca finished off the remainder of the corn dog. Lumi waved his hands around sarcastically as he began. Rolo sheepishly handed Luca the balloons. Luca threw himself at Rollo, hugging him as tightly as he could.
Rolo handed Luca an unopened letter. Luca, some things are going to happen that might be difficult for you to understand, if I am honest. I hardly understand them myself, but whatever happens, I need you to know that I love you. None of this is fair to you. You have already lost so much. We both have. I wish there was a simpler way forward. But if there is, I haven't thought of it. God knows I've tried. Everything I've done, I did for you. I hope someday you can accept that. Love, Gran. Luca folded the paper into his pocket and headed up the ladder. Luca was at a loss for words, but that was fine. Words aren't always necessary. Sadly, this was untrue. A distant rumble shook the treehouse. It was not fireworks. It was something the boys couldn't possibly comprehend. Something as old and cruel as time itself. A shockwave of cold tore through the room. A bitter, unfathomable chill. Before they could react, it encased them in ice. Two boys. Reunited by friendship, only to be cruelly separated by a malevolence beyond reason. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene, in a silent treehouse turned statuary, in a town brought low by its secrets, sits a pair of friends, alone, together, for the rest of time. The end. No, that can't be the ending. It simply can't. I won't accept it, and I hope you won't either. There are more endings, more possibilities. I, I can feel it. We are just going to have to sort through them all until we find the one that fits. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star-filled summer night. Moonlight filtered down, shimmering in the treetops. Luca stopped himself mid-sentence. Luca saw Beck skulking by the gate.
grabbed the wrought iron bars and shook the gate. was an excited whisper. mysterious figure retracted their mask, hair pushing out from all corners. A chill ran down Luca's spine. His vision blurred. Vex stifled a sharp wince, and Luca looked down to see himself wrenching her hand. Gran tussled her hair back under the face mask. a curt nod and disappeared into the night. Chapter 5 What big ears you have! Lucas sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. After checking to make sure the coast was clear, Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. 